Once upon a time, a good many years ago, there was a traveler and he set out upon a journey. It was a magic journey and it was to seem very long when he began it and very short when he got half way through. He traveled along Arthur Dark Path for some little time without meeting anything until at last he came to a beautiful child. So he said to the child, What do you do here? And the child said, Amir was at play. Come and play with me. So he played with the child the whole day long and they very, very merry. The sky was so blue, the sun was so bright, the water was so sparkling, the leaves were so green, the flowers were so lovely, and they heard such, such singing birds, and saw so many better eyes, that everything was beautiful. This was in fine weather. When it rained, they loved to watch the falling drops and to smell the fresh scent. When it blew, it was delightful to listen to the wind and fancy what it said as it came rushing from its home. Where was that? They wondered, whistling and howling driving the clouds before it, bending the trees, rumbling in the coming eyes, shaking the house, and making the sea roar in fury. But when it snowed, that was best of all. They liked nothing so well as to look up at the white flags, falling fast and the thick legs down from the breast of millions of white birds, and to see how smooth and deep the drift was, and to listen to the hush over the paths and roads. They had plenty of the finest toys in the world, and the most astonishing picture books, all about skimitar and slippers and turbans. But one day, of a sudden, the traveler lost the child. He called to him over and over and again, but got no answer. So, he went to bend his rod and went on for a little while without meeting anything. Until at last, he, ca he came to a handsome boy. So, he said to the boy, What do you do here? And the boy said, I'm always learning. Come on, learn with me. So, he learned with that boy about Jupiter and Gino, and the Greeks and the Romans, and I don't know what. And I learned more than I could tell our he either. For he soon forgot a great deal of it. But they were not always learning. They had the merriest games that ever were played. They rode upon the river in summer and skated on the ice in winter. They were active afoot and active on horseback, at cricket and all games at ball. At a personal base, they had haunts. Follow me later and more sports than I can think of. Nobody could beat them. They had holidays too, and twelve cakes, and parties where they danced till midnight, and real theaters where they saw plays of real gold and silver rise out of the real earth, and saw all the wonders of the world at once. As to friend, they had such dear friends, and so many of them, that I want the time to reckon them up. They were all young, like the handsome boy, and were never 
to be strange to one another all their leaves throw. Still one day in the midst of all these pleasures that la that, ra that Raveler lost the boy as he had lost the child and after calling to him in vain went, went on upon his journey. So he went on for a little while well, without seeing anything until at last he came to a young man. So he said to the young man, What do you do here? I'm always in love. Come and love with me. So he went away with the young man, and presently they came to one of the brightest girls that ever was seen, just like funny in the corner there. And she had eyes like funny, and hair like funny, and dimples like funnies, and she loathed and colored just as funny does well I am talking about hair. So the young man fell in love directly, just as somebody I won't mention. The first time he come here, did with funny. Well, he was teased sometimes, just as somebody used to be by funny, and they quarreled same time, just as somebody and funny used to quarrel. And they made it up and sat in the dark and wrote letters every day and never were happy as cinder and were always looking out for one another and pretending not to and were injured at Christmas time and sat close to one another by the fire and were going to be married very soon all excitedly like somebody I won't mention and funny. But the traveler lost them one day, as he had lost the rest of his friends. And after calling to them to come back, which they never did, went on upon his journey. So he went on for a little while without seeing anything, until at last he came to, to a middle-aged gentleman. So, he said to the gentleman, what are you doing here? And his answer was, I'm always busy. Come on, be busy with me. He began to be very busy with that gentleman. And they went on through the wood together. The whole journey was through a wood. Only it had been opened and green at first, like a wood in spring. And now began to be thick and dark. Like a wood in summer, some of the little trees that had come out early were even turning brown. The gentleman was not alone, but had a lady of about the same age with him, who was his wife, and they had children, who were with them too. So they all went in together through the wood, cutting down the trees and making about through the branches and the fallen leaves and the crying burdens and working hard something. They came to a long green avenue that opened into the road. Then they would hear a very little distant voice crying, Father, father, I'm another child. Stop for me. And recently they would see a very little figure, growing larger as it came along, running to join them. When it came up, they all crowded around it, and kissed and welcomed it, and they, they all went on together. Sometimes they came to several avenues at once, and then they all stopped still. And one of the children said, Father, I'm going to see. And another said, Father, I'm going to India. And another, Father, I'm going to see my fronty where I can. And another, 
further I'm going to heaven so with many tears at parting they want solitary down those avenues each child open its way and the child who want to heaven rose into the golden ear and vanished whenever this parting happened that the traveler looked and the gentleman and saw him